Well, let me tell you the story about how my iPhone lost over 100 gigs of photos and videos. If you're like me, and 99.9% .9 of all the photo and video work that you do happens on your smartphone, then you can imagine how devastated I was when I woke up to find 150 gigs of photos and videos suddenly missing from my iPhone. Now, I'm laughing a little bit, I'm smiling a little bit because Luckily for me, this video sort of has a happy ending. So let me tell you the story about how I went out and I was trying to film a story about my recently passed grandfather and almost lost all of it. This really got started when I just sat down to have my grandparents tell the stories about when they were younger. And honestly, things were going great. Picture quality was great. Sound quality was great. But the problem that I noticed pretty immediately was after our first long session where we sat down my grandma told stories for almost two full hours. It was pretty amazing, and we got some great stories that honestly some of us had never even heard before. And the result was a 4K video, two hours long, that was 93 gigs by itself. Now, if you're like me, you tend to buy the phone that has the most memory so that you have plenty of space for all of the stuff you're doing. Now for me, I always get the 256 gigabyte version. And the reason I do that is because I know I shoot a lot of video and I want to make sure I have plenty of room for it. Now here's the thing, I've never shot a two hour long 4K video clip before, but I was suspicious that it might cause a problem. Now the reason why I was suspicious was right off the bat, I got home and I tried to airdrop it from my iPhone to my Mac and it wouldn't airdrop. Now, it's not that surprising. That's a lot to transfer over a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connection. And so I did some Googling. And I even had this confirmed by Apple support. AirDrop doesn't do well for anything over 10 gig. So that was my first problem, is I now had a file that was on my iPhone that I couldn't get to my Mac because AirDrop wouldn't work. So I thought to myself, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait for iCloud to sync. And then once it has synced up to iCloud, I'll just pull it right back down to my Mac. Easy. Well, it turns out that where we were at in Kentucky, 93 gigabytes of video was never going to sync. So I got desperate. It turns out the only way that I could find to transfer a video that big off of an iPhone onto my Mac was to buy a third party piece of software called iExplorer. iExplorer is not that expensive. Uh, and plenty of people have used it for years to get all sorts of things off of their iPhones. And so what I did was I very first thing, as soon as I noticed the problem, got iExplorer, downloaded this 93 gigabyte video onto my Mac. So I at least had a backup of that. So that was good. But now, after that, I noticed some other odd behaviors. So I continued filming, going all over the state, filming videos with my grandparents, asking them questions, having them tell stories, and it was pretty magical. Now, as I mentioned before, having a giant video file like that really messes with iCloud Sync, and so I was running into problems where nothing was going to sync to iCloud. In fact, it kept giving me strange errors about, or out of space, can't back up to iCloud, and even though I had more than a terabyte of iCloud space left over, it was still insisting that it couldn't back up. So I, I was getting desperate at this point. I was already back home, and when it wouldn't back up, I thought, okay, well, maybe this is the time where I need to go through and try to manually move some stuff over and see if I can encourage iCloud backup to work. So what I did was I went in to my phone and I went through the photo library and I was looking at all the different videos that I had and I noticed that there was duplicates of a lot of them. And now this is, this is weird because I only shot one. And so doing some Googling and trying to figure out what was going on, it seems like, at least from what people think on the forums, and this makes some sense to me, is that as you're shooting videos, has a copy of it. But once it goes to send it to iCloud, it does some amount of encoding or encryption or whatever it does, and you end up with a temporary copy of everything that it's gonna back up. So, I guess what makes sense, in my situation, 
I had tried to back up a whole bunch of large videos, none of them as big as the one 93 gigabyte video, and because that 93 gigabyte video was causing problems with iCloud, it was just giving up. So I thought, okay, this, this makes sense. What I'll do is I'll go through and I'll just delete each of the duplicates. That'll suddenly free up space on my phone so now it can actually have a good go at backing up to iCloud again. And then after that's finished, uh, then I can go through and I can clear off some stuff off my phone once I've got it over to the Mac and I'll be good to go. So that's what I did. I started by going through, selecting each of those, moving them to the trash, and I was, if you don't know, on, on the phone, there is a difference between deleting it and just having it moved to your recently deleted folder. Uh, the recently deleted folder holds everything that will be deleted within 30 days. So I was going through and I was moving them to recently deleted by just selecting them and hitting delete. And then I was going back to my main photo album and verifying that yes, I still have a copy of each and every one of these videos okay. sitting in my main camera roll. So I was like, okay, everything looks good. Copy and recently deleted, copy sitting there in my camera roll. So then what I did was I hit the delete all button. So if you're like me and you're hearing the story and somebody else is telling it, you might immediately think, you know what? Don't hit permanently delete on those recently deleted. Because usually what happens is if you hit permanently delete, that means that they are gone forever. Now, me being desperate at this point because none of my videos will back up and none of them will sync, and these are all videos that are super important so I can't just let any of them go, I thought, okay, I've gotta be super thorough, I've gotta do everything I can in my power, and then I've gotta just go for it because I've gotta get these things backed up. That was a mistake. I hit delete all permanently, and what happened was is it emptied the recently deleted folder, but it messed up all of them that were in the camera roll. And I don't know what the problem was, but I do know that it replaced all of them with blank white listings in the, in the camera roll, and every time you tap them, they refuse to play. It was just a white screen. Now, so at this point, I'm panicking because all of my videos are now disappeared and I've done everything that I can to try to get them to back up and nothing's working. So I did what any reasonable person would do, I call Apple support. Now I, I knew this and I didn't want to do this, but I did it anyway because I knew that you can't really move forward with support unless you do what they ask you to do. Uh, they said, go ahead and update to the most recent version of iOS and then restart your phone. And sure enough, when I did that, not only did it reboot and come back up with a camera roll that looked different, it actually came up with a camera roll that just said, restoring from iCloud. Now, I've never seen this message before, but everything's gone. There is literally nothing left of my camera roll. And those little white boxes of videos that somehow got messed up, they're gone too. So you can imagine, in a full panic, I'm calling Apple support, escalating manage to manager to manager, and I'm trying to get whatever help I can get to try and recover any of this. But honestly, uh, it's not looking good because what happens is, is if you delete it from your device and it's never been backed up to iCloud, you're done. There's absolutely nothing you can do. So what did I learn here? Well, I learned that even though it said that it was failing to back up to iCloud and my phone was acting pretty erratically. When I got on the phone with the representative from Apple support, he was going through and he actually can see on his end everything that's gone through iCloud. And fortunately for me, the smaller videos had all been backed up to iCloud even though it claimed that it had. So what's the takeaway here? Well, the takeaway is they can be recovered uh, but only if they've made it through iCloud and only if you're doing it within a certain time period that they still have access to it. So what happens is he can see them, he can restore them, and it takes days for my phone to recover everything from iCloud. But when it finally does, it has all of my content still there and it brought back those videos that were deleted. So here's what you need to know. If you're gonna be a blogger or a vlogger, or you're just trying to do something even slightly out of the ordinary with your iPhone when it comes to photos and videos, there's a couple things that you need to know that I learned from this uh, that, you know, I'm sitting here, I'm telling you this story, and uh, luckily I recovered basically everything. I haven't gone through it all. I think it's all still there. 
and I'm still using my iPhone to film. But I've got some lessons that I have learned that I will never forget. Lesson number one, do not film anything as big as I did with that two hour long video. Honestly, if you're filming at 4K, uh, I would recommend starting and stopping the video every 10 minutes to half hour, somewhere in that range, so that you get several smaller clips one, rather than one massive clip. Now this might seem weird, but the reason is, uh, and this is based on what Apple support told me, was that when it goes to back up, that single file, it actually does do some amount of duplicating. Now in this case, a 93 gigabyte file on a 256 gig hard drive will almost fill up the entire hard drive just with that one duplicate action. Now that's a problem because if you don't know this, your phone really relies on having free space so that it can copy and remove and create all these temporary files that it needs to do basic operations, including backup to iCloud. So rule number one is do not get these massive video files built up. And rule number two is do not let your phone get full. If your phone starts getting full, backups start failing. And if backups start failing, there's nothing really you can do. Rule number three, if you're gonna do any risky operation like deleting something that you know is valuable out of your photo library, use iExplorer and back them up to a different disk first. So in my case, I pulled everything out with iExplorer and stored it on my Mac and then duplicated it onto two hard drives because I wanted to be very sure that I had a copy of this very important video clip. Now in your case, it could be whatever, but I just want you to know that there are things that you can do to back up when iCloud and AirDrop fail, which they will on large files and AirDrop will absolutely fail on anything larger than 10 gigabytes. All right, and finally, if you're gonna do this, the, the last rule is make sure that you back up everything. Now, I don't just mean backup as in let it back up to iCloud. That's awesome. I do that with all of my photos and videos. Um, but I mean back them up to another device, back them up to other hard drives. If you're filming stuff that's really important and you're filming stuff that's irreplaceable like I was, you really need to find ways to back up in multiple places. Now, most people, if they're using a cinema film camera or a standalone DSLR or something like that, something that's not a smartphone, they're pulling the memory card and they're immediately on import, saving it to multiple locations for these valuable shots. The phone is a little bit trickier. There's not a good interface in the Photos app to take something and import it directly from your phone into Photos and then onto multiple hard drives if you're trying to back stuff up. It really is just a, it all stays in Photos and it all is backed up to iCloud. Anyway, the short version of the story is I lost almost 150 gigabytes of photos and videos by trying to clear up space. And the real source of the problem was they were just too big to be backed up using Apple's normal systems. I hope this helps somebody. And I hope that if you're trying to go out there and you're trying to shoot some of these irreplaceable moments on your iPhone, that you follow some of these tips to make sure that you don't end up in the same situation I did. All right, can't wait to see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Walking on down